I am a maker. I know, I know, that's kind of vague, but hear me out. Making stuff is not what I do for a living. I work full time as a vice principal in a school. And making is something that's just embedded in my DNA. Something I do for fun whenever I have time. But lately I've been wondering, what if I could do this more and do less of my full time work? And if I could, so could probably you. Let's go back a bit in time. Have you ever found yourself in somewhat of a life crisis? Back in 2015, I had a major one. I started wondering why we work so much and I had this thought that maybe I could grow some of the food that we eat. So the idea was that if I were able to grow some of the food that we eat, I could spend one day less at work and instead invest that time at home. So seven years ago, all of these thoughts started, but we never did anything about it. The life crisis sort of ended, but the thoughts have been with us since then. And not without reason. In Sweden, more and more people experience stress, anxiety and mental issues. We leave our kids at kindergarten early in the morning and pick them up late afternoon. They're tired and we're tired. We don't really have time to go grocery shopping, so we have the food delivered home with recipes so we don't have to think for ourselves. Just follow the recipe. And we definitely don't have time to clean the house, so we hire a cleaning service, leaving us more and more dependent on our salary and our career. And in the midst of that, I think we kind of forget what the end goal of life is. I mean, no one knows what the goal of life is, and I do think that it's up to everyone to decide for themselves, but we can get some clues to help ourselves. I mean, look at this list of regrets of people actually dying. I wish I hadn't worked so hard is up there, in that list. But anyway, we have decided to go through with the idea. We're going to move outside of the city, work less and try to spend more time taking care of ourselves. But can we afford it? Money is of course an important part of all of this. So we need to reduce the amount of money that we spend, but also give up on some of the luxuries of life while still keeping the ones that we don't want to give up. And for starters, we need to sell the house that we currently live in. And in order to get as much as possible from that sale, we need to fix it up. A couple of weeks ago, we started this little room renovation. We have been insulating and creating a room from what previously was only a small closet. It's really tiny, but it is in fact one more room in the house that can be used for at least a bed. And that might look better when selling the house. It is finished now, but in order to make it look extra nice, I made a couple of things. I started by making a shelf for books. Now for this small room, we need a shelf that doesn't take up too much space. So the idea was to make a shelf inspired by old plate shelves. The design is pretty simple and straightforward. I started by planing down some of the leftover floorboards we had from the room renovation. Then I used a table saw to cut out the tongue and groove from those floorboards. Once that was done, I could start measuring the material and cut it to size using a crosscut sled on my table saw. On the two sides of the box I was making, I wanted a curved corner, so I drew that up on one of the sides, had it cut on the bandsaw, and then I could stuck the two pieces together with double sided tape, and then I used a flush cut trim bit with the router to replicate the same curve on the other piece. I also used the table saw and the crosscut sled to make the slots for the fence pieces of the shelf while the pieces were still taped together. And then I had some issues separating the two pieces. <laughs> Here's the deal with double sided tape. It's so hard to get it off. Ah! Ah. I can jam stuff in between, but it's pine. I'm afraid of ruining it. Oh, man, that double-sided tape is strong. Reminder to myself for the next time, don't use that much double-sided tape. I used the router to cut an inset for the middle shelf and a chisel to clean up the rounded corners of that same inset. Then I sanded everything to 80 grit and then I could start assembly. 
I have this clever sender drill jig that's 3D printed that I use to drill holes for dowels. I'll leave a link to the one I have down in the description. And while you're down there, I'll have links to everything else I use as well. I used wood glue and those dowels to attach everything together. If you don't have dowels, you could glue it up and clamp it down as well. I'll upload the sketches to the shelf if you want to give it a try yourself. I had the fence pieces cut on the table saw and then I was ready to glue all the pieces to the shelf. And then I just had to sand it, give it a coat of paint before I could attach it to the wall. The top fence piece in the back is merely for a place to attach the shelf to the wall. Now the total cost for this shelf is barely nothing. We had some leftover floorboards since laying down the floor and that is something that most people would probably just throw away. But with wood prices these days, I save anything I can get my hands on. The paint I'm using is also leftover from the same room renovation. I also made a quick coat hanger for the wall. I actually had the pieces cut on the CNC while I was doing the shelf. I used the router to create a detail around the hanger. I attached the hangers to the base with wood glue and screws from the back and then I could just sand the pieces and paint it as well. And both the pieces were ready for the room. I'll have the drawings online for the hanger as well. But we aren't finished there. We need to fix a bunch of stuff in this house in order to be able to sell it. And if we manage to make some profit from selling the house, we can use that money to start living a new life with less work. And most importantly, I'll be able to spend more time with the family and hopefully I'll be able to spend more time making as well. And you can do this too. If you're one of those people rushing through traffic every morning, at least consider what your options are. Maybe you're content the way things are and that's just fine. But maybe, just maybe, you might be like me, wondering. What if I just did something completely different? What if this isn't the goal of life that I was imagining? A global poll conducted by Gallup from 2019 stated that out of the world's 1 billion full-time workers, only 15% of people are engaged at work. That means that an astronomical 85% of people are unhappy in their jobs. And that only means that we're doing something very wrong. I'm not sure what the solution is, but for us, we really want to try this thing out. Oh, and this is how the room turned out. If you want to support this channel and you live in Sweden, me and my wife have a website where you can purchase some of the things that we have made and with every purchase we plant a tree. And we would love it if you would support us in our adventure going forward. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!